New Jersey born, at 16, John Joseph Travolta landed his first gig in a musical. So he decided to quit school and move to New York, where he, funnily enough, joined the touring musical company of Greece, though not in the lead role just yet. He moved to Hollywood and found fame as Vinnie Barbarino in the TV show Welcome Back, Cotter. But it was the disco dancing role of Tony Manero in Saturday Night Fever that made him a star. And at only 24 years of age, made him one of the youngest Oscar nominees in history. Following this, he starred as Danny Zuko in the highest grossing musical of all time, Greece, of course. Travolta considers both these movies signature films. I think it's important that the young people that are so in love with those movies see what it was like for us to see it on the big screen. I think that's very important because that was part of a, a time where the world was starting to change and that had impact on all of us, but we had that impact seeing it on a big screen. With his sideburn, tight pants and unforgettable strut, he quickly became the sexiest pin-up star of the 70s. Then over the next decade, this all came crashing down after a string of box office flops. Many labelled him a has-been. Disillusioned, he pursued his great love of flying and earned his pilot licence, a passion he still enjoys today. He owns five planes and is a Qantas ambassador. In the late 80s, he starred opposite Kirstie Alley in the Look Who's Talking series. After struggling for a decade, his career was reborn in the 1994 Pulp Fiction. Its director, Quentin Tarantino, won the Palme d'Or for Best Film at the annual film festival in Cannes. And Travolta was now back on Hollywood's A-list in high demand and being paid the big bucks. I think it all started at the Cannes Film Festival. Um, that's when I started to feel the difference of, of the future, what it could be. Right. And uh, when, after the, the film Pulp Fiction got the Palme d'Or, I knew that things were going to change. And by the end of the summer, that was in... Uh, in 1994. For April. Yeah. Oh, no, May. May. By September, everything had changed for me. You know, uh, more interesting offers, better quality, better, uh, more, qu uh, more of them. Right. You know, and right. uh, including Get Shorty. Right. And uh, I was on my road to a new uh, career. It was his brilliant portrayal of Vincent Vega, a long-haired, heroin-addicted, strangely sympathetic hitman that landed him his second Oscar nomination. Now, this is a true story. For the last five years, I sat with my wife, and I, uh, I've been married four years, but when we were dating from this point on, we watched the Oscars every single year. And every year she said, oh, couldn't we please go to the Oscars? And I said, well, next year maybe, you know. But I said, you know, it's not really a fun thing unless you're, you're giving out an award or, you're, or you've been nominated. But um, next year, and for five years, and last year I said, Honey, come hell or high water, I promise you, we are going to the Oscars. <laughs> if you would have told me that I've been nominated for an Oscar this year, I, would, I just couldn't have, uh, wouldn't have believed it. Travolta recognises that it's not his talent alone, but also support from great names in the film business that has helped with his success. This last year, or two years, let's say, the people that have shown their kind of uh, selfless love for me, you know, uh, it's been amazing, you know. I, Danny DeVito, or, uh, Quentin Tarantino, even Steven Spielberg called me the other day and recommended a movie that I had to do, he thought. And I thought, boy, I couldn't be taken better care of than, than to have these guys who are very important in the movie industry uh, want me to uh, survive like this. You know, it's really unusual and, and I welcomed it. Right. You know, uh, I, I love feeling loved like that. You know, it's a great feeling. And the winner is... John Travolta gets shorty. Winning the 1996 Golden Globe for his role in Get Shorty proved that his career was back on track. But in all the excitement, he forgot to thank his wife, Kelly Preston, in his acceptance speech, but managed to smooth things over at the press conference. Oh, come here, honey. <laughs> Well, I said, <laughs> I said that I'm going to stay up all night. I might even have a few drinks. Don't know yet. Feeling it out. It depends on how this next few minutes goes. <laughs> oh, it's okay. 
It's so okay. I, I saw them flashing that please wrap it up sign, so I know you got nervous. It's okay. I did. Having already found success playing cool characters, it's no wonder John loved playing Chili Palmer, an ultra cool hitman. The, the one it connected with with Chili Palmer was basically uh, the idea that he is as cool as we all want to be, but seldom get a chance to be. And I'd like to, to, to be that guy, you know. Unfortunately, no one's as cool as he is. Maybe James Bond, you know. But uh, in real life, there are few people that are as cool as Chili. While earlier on in his career, action films weren't his thing, this changed after he worked with John Woo on Face Off. If John Woo would like me to do an action movie, I'll do one with John Woo. I'm talking about one with him and Nick Cage right now, called Face Off and that's in negotiations. So if John Woo's involved, I'll do it. But by, by normal standards, it's not my genre. But with him, it becomes my genre. Success continued with films like The General's Daughter, Ladder 49, and Wild Hogs. Drawing on his formal acting training, Travolta is a big believer in extensive preparation and research before filming a role. So which process does he enjoy most? Well, um, I do like shooting of the movie. But without the prep, without preparing, you don't do a good job, as good a job. So the preparing and the rehearsal is very important. You get all the feeling and the foundation. And then by the time the, action, the camera is on, you have a performance. So each step is very important. Development of how the character looks, how he uh, behaves, uh, the dialogue improvements, and then the delivery of the character on screen is all methodical. We have seen Travolta's weight yo-yo up and down over the years, depending on the role he's playing. I think it's a funny uh, chronology to look at, because my first time I was overweight in a movie was Look Who's Talking, and that was my, my second biggest hit. Second time I was overweight was Pulp Fiction. That was a huge hit. Third time I was overweight was Michael, where I had a gut and smoked cigarettes. Huge hit. So I got the feeling after a while that it didn't matter if I was skinnier or thin. But what did matter was, does the character, should it be slim or heavy? Thin, fat, male, then female. He surprised us all playing a larger-than-life woman in Hairspray, and it paid off big time at the box office, even earning him a Golden Globe nomination. It was magical because I didn't know if it was gonna work or not. And when it all got done, I put a nightgown on, and I went in and I just smiled this big cheesy smile that had seven layers of chin and big cheeks and all that. It, it just became Edna out of nowhere. She just suddenly lived. At first you go, oh, that's John, you know. But then once you're into it, you just forget that it's me and you just ride this trip with this very large woman. John Travolta has always played sort of a sexy guy, especially in Saturday Night Fever and Grease. He had, you know, this body, he was so sexy, and now he's playing you know, an overweight woman. So it's definitely a different career choice, but I, I think it's amazing because, you know, it just shows he has range and he can play anything. I think that's the ultimate sign of a good actor is you can portray anything, even a woman when you're a man. After pulling that off, critics and audiences were in agreement. He was a genuine star. So what's the key to John's success? The successful action for me so far has been uh, especially recently, is to change form every movie out. You know, uh, Pulp Fiction was drama, get shorted comedy, and uh, Broken Arrow uh, action. The next one's a fantastical drama, so I, I think if I just change every time, it'll be an interesting uh, career. It seems that John was destined to be an actor. His mum was an actress, singer and drama teacher. The youngest of six kids, all but one of his siblings, went on to become performers. Somehow I think he was the most successful. Growing up in an Irish-Italian family in an Irish neighborhood, a lot, of, a lot of humor going on there, you know? A lot of mimicking and uh, making fun of and things like that, so I have a pretty big background on that. Family has always been very important to John. He married the gorgeous actress Kelly Preston in 1991, and they had two children, son Jet and daughter Ella. Tragically, in early 2009, 16-year-old Jet, who was autistic, died after suffering a seizure. John, understandably, is still struggling to come to terms with the tragedy. Oprah's favourite actor, John Travolta, has done the unthinkable, pulling off one of the biggest comebacks of all time to become one of Hollywood's most loved actors. 
proving to all of us that we should never give up and keep striving for success. So stay tuned to Star Picks for more of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's altogether better on screen and at mnc.tv.